Hey everyone, James Niggemeyer here. Thank you for tuning back into my YouTube channel. It's August, dog days of summer. We're a little over the halfway mark for summer, probably here in East Texas. And that means square bill fishing. I think when I think late August, moving into September, October, in the fall, I think about square bill fishing, throwing a lot of square bill crankbaits, shallow. And I thought it'd be a great time to do a My Setup series for the rod reel line that I typically like to throw. And we'll go over a couple body shapes and sizes and different things like that. But basically this video will be all about my setup for fishing square build crankbaits. Before I get right into it, if you haven't already subscribed, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And if you like the content, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up and share it on your social media pages so that maybe some of your friends that aren't aware of my channel get a chance to see some of the content and uh, obviously leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Love to hear from you guys. And with that, let's get right into it. As I said, I really like to fish square bill crankbaits year round, but when it comes into the late summer, into the fall, I feel like there's a period where a lot of the fish, those schools will break up in the summer and there'll be a lot of suspended fish. There'll be bait that's actually moving into some shallow areas, bays, pockets, creeks, even around docks and laydowns and stumps, a square bill crankbait is a phenomenal way to catch them when the water temperature is at its highest and begins that descent towards cooler water temperatures. Shorter days, cooler water temperatures, it might be a slow process. It might still hover in those hot temperatures like here it will in Texas for probably a few more weeks before it, we even notice a drop in the water temperature, but Square bill crankbait still really good. So I want to share with you the square bill rod reel line setup that I use. I'm really partial to a fiberglass rod. I like composite rods, which a composite is a graphite and then it joins into a more or like a fiberglass blank. So it's composite. It's made up of two different materials. But for some years now, I've gone with an all fiberglass blank and I like like a seven foot medium heavy or heavy action. This rod is actually the Lou's David Fritz perfect crankbait rod. I've been fishing with this one for a while. I really like it. I feel like I can make accurate presentations, hook and land fish, and um, it's something that's worked for me. I've played with some different rod actions and different rod types that Lou's makes, but this is the one that I like. So again, it's the Lou's perfect crankbait rod. This one happens to be a heavy power moderate action. I've also used the medium heavy moderate action. The lure weight is half ounce to two ounce and line weight 15 to 30. Now for me, when it comes to square bill crankbaits, I really like fluorocarbon and I'll generally go with something like 14 to 16. If it's real heavy and real stained, I might go to 20, but 14 to 16 and I love the gamma edge fluorocarbon for that. Now there are times, and I'll probably use that about 80% of the time, but there are times when I'll actually use gamma copolymer. And copolymers like closely related to monofilament. And there are situations where I'll use that because it won't sink. It's not as dense as fluorocarbon is. If I feel like because of the buoyancy of that uh, copolymer, it doesn't drag the bait down. It'll actually help it to go over objects, over stumps, over laydowns, and different things like that. So there's times when that copolymer is what I'll reach for. It doesn't have as much sensitivity either, and it has a little bit more stretch. So when you're in close quarters, maybe a 20 foot cast away and a fish bites it or right by the boat, that gives it a little bit of stretch. So that's one, I that's one of the, one of the attributes of the, of the uh, copolymer that I really like. This is it, it's gamma's Polyflex. Um, it's a green color and uh, works really well for that. The reel I've been using the last few years has been a loose speed spool. It's a BB1 and it's a 7 1 to 1 gear ratio reel. I kind of like, I've kind of settled into that. I don't, you know, I've tried some little slower ones, I've tried some faster ones. 7 1 to 1 seems to be uh, a great speed for the way I like to, the muscle memory and the way I like to turn the handle. Uh, I like that, the real cast amazing, helps me be accurate and uh, works really well in this type of a scenario. I have also used the uh, Hyper Mag, Lose Hyper Mag, 7.5 to one gear ratio reel, a little bit smaller spool, so um, just faster gear ratio, a little bit smaller spool where this one has a wider spool here. So um, 
just will hold a little bit more line. And with this setup, like I said, this is my square bill crankbait rod. So I'll use it for like a 1.0. I'll use it for the 1.5. I'll use it for the 1.5 shallow. And I'll even use it for the 2.5 wake bait. The wake bait's got that bill that comes down at a more pronounced angle to help it wake on the surface. Got a good knocking rattle in there. And then obviously the, just the standard KVD 2.5 by Strike King. Um, I'll even use it on, on the 4.0. I don't typically fish the 8.0 very much, just being honest with you. But this is a great crankbait rod because it's versatile. That's one of the things I like about it also. This is my square bill crankbait rod, but it's actually just my cranking rod for a lot of things. I'll fish a, five, a Series 5 striking crankbait, a 5XD, and, and even a 6XD. I won't go with an 8 or 10XD, but the 5 and the 6XD and the 5, Series 5 work well with this outfit also. If I'm gonna be more long casting, I, go, I drop down in size to 12, but again, that's not what this is about. This is more about your, my square bill crankbait rod setup, and that's what I'll stick to today. So, I mean, that's really the setup that I use. I like the, I like the fiberglass because it's more parabolic. You hear a lot of people talk about a parabolic bend, and when you have a parabolic bend, it, it just, it sweeps, it bends further down in the blank. Instead of it being like a, a fast action where just mainly the tip really bends, this actually will really, you know, it'll actually bend right into the blank in the midsection there. Just kind of show you what I mean by that. And that's what I mean by a parabolic bend. I mean, it gets down, it bends almost halfway down in the blank. And that helps you when it comes to crankbait hooks, it helps you to really not pull the hook out of the fish's mouth and enables you to really let them surge and that whole rod will actually move with it. If you have a real stout rod, the rod's not gonna bend as much, and when that fish surge, it can pull, surges, it'll pull some of those hooks free. So that's really why, there's a reason for everything that I do on this, this outfit, seven one-to-one -one gear ratio reel. I feel like if I wanna speed up, I can. If I wanna slow down, I can. The line size, 14 and 16, is a good average size. If I'm fishing square bills around shallow cover, I need, I need to have some sort of strength, some sort of uh, diameter thickness, so that I feel like it, it will actually enable the bait to move well, but I'm also able to move them out of cover, around thicker cover, square bill's good around heavy cover. And then, of course, the fiberglass blank helps me to make accurate casts, but also fight those fish. When they're, the water's really hot, they can make those surges and jumps, and I can keep contact with them and keep that rod bent because it's a more parabolic bend. I believe I've covered everything on my setup for square bill crankbait fishing. So that's going to be it for now, guys. Hey, thanks again for tuning into the YouTube channel. And until next time, good fishing.